Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel, and today I'm bringing you a tutorial. As you can see here, I have in front of me a nice little swatch of brioche. It's a two color brioche, and I wanted to show you how I knit brioche uh, using the technique that I do for knitting, which is a continental knit with a Norwegian pearl. I don't move my yarn forward to the front of my work. My yarn is always at my back. If you've missed that tutorial, you can always click the little eye card that's up here in the right hand side of your screen um, and it will bring you directly to the video if you'd like to learn the details on how to do a continental knit or a Norwegian pearl. Uh, I definitely recommend this technique for crocheters who are learning how to knit because then you are um, it's much more of a natural feel because most crocheters are, if they they haven't knit before, they're used to always keeping their yarn at the back of their work. And traditionally, when you look at tutorials for brioche knitting, you are seeing um, a continental knitter or an English style knitter who are constantly moving their yarn back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, in either case using either finger. Um, so I wanted to show you how you can do brioche. You don't have to be scared to do it. It's not a difficult technique once you know the mechanism. And so I'm going to show this to you here. Um, you should have a basic knowledge of knitting and purling. Um, you should know how to cast on. And um, this is just going to go through each pass showing you how to do a slip one yarn over and a brioche knit or a brioche purl. All right, let's get started. So you can see here I have two colors. This is my color A, which is the teal color, and my color B, which is the uh, mustard color. There are many tutorials to show how to set up a brioche knit swatch, but basically what I did was I cast on 30 stitches, and I'm just trying to do like an I-cord edging or just like a stable edge so that I can practice going back and forth doing brioche. These are pretty uh, thick yarn, thick needles, just trying to get a feel for the technique. So when you're doing brioche, you're always starting with color A. So each time you do a pass, you're beginning, your first pass is always with color A, and your second pass is always with color B. And if you are facing the right side, or the side where the, the ridges are the knit stitches here, this is your color A. You're going to be knitting on these rows, and you're going to be slipping the the valleys. And then if you're on the opposite side, you'd be knitting color B and slipping with color A. And so I'm going to show you here, it's important to have two different color yarns, especially when starting out, so that you're not confused about which stitches you should be slipping and which stitches you should be knitting. So ignore the edging, this is just me trying to keep a stable edge. I'm just gonna slip these stitches. Actually, you know what, I'm just gonna knit these stitches. So since we're starting on the right side, I'm starting with my color A. I'm going to knit these first few stitches just for an edge. This is not brioche, let's just be clear. <laughs> this is just to have a stable edge. <laughs> okay, so now we're at our first stitch in brioche, which is here. You can see that there are kind of two strands. One is the knit stitch, and one is the yarn over from the previous row. So any time you come to a doubled up stitch, it's the one you're going to be working in either a brioche knit or a brioche purl. In this case, whoops, sorry about that folks. In this case, we are looking at the right side of our work. We're using our main color, our first color, color A. So we're gonna be knitting this side. So we're gonna start with a brioche knit here. And you can see these are all knit all the way up, knit, 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 knit. That's how I always remember where I'm at. So we're gonna start here by doing a brioche knit and I do a continental knit. So I am going to hold my yarn in my left hand, insert from the front, and I'm going to knit both of those stitches together, slide off the needle, and you can see the yarn over from the previous row it makes a nice little shawl around our knit stitch that we just made. Now we're going to do what's called a slip one yarn over where we're actually making this little shawl that will be worked later. So we're going to be slipping purlwise. I insert my yarn behind, my, I insert my needle behind my working yarn and insert purlwise to slip off. So that is a slip one yarn over. I hold my work and I'm going to knit my next stitch. Again, slip one yarn over, knit, slip one yarn over, knit. If you've ever felt like you've gotten lost or you don't know where you're at, take a look 
at your ridges and valleys. What's coming next? Is it a ridge or is it a valley? So here's a valley. We're going to be slip one yarn over, and then we're going to knit again. So if you're doing this technique, it's really easy to just keep your yarn at the back of your work. Slip and knit. I believe that Stephen West is a continental knitter. I think his tutorial for brioche, which is how I started doing it, is on the exploration station. It was very easy to follow. And you could watch him go down the row like this. Simple. All right, we've come to the last stitch here. I'm going to slip one yarn over, and I'm going to slip these just with the yarn in front just to have a stable edge here. Okay. So we finished our first pass. Now we're not going to turn our work. We're going to go all the way back to the beginning. So we're going to slide our work to the other needle, and then we're going to work color B. Okay, here we are. We slid the work all the way back down, and now we're going to work our next pass of this row using color B, which is the mustard color. So I'm just going to slip these to, again, have a stable edge. Okay, so now we come to our first stitch in our row. And we can see here that it is the knit stitch from the previous row. So it is a singleton, there's no yarn over on it, so we are going to slip one yarn over. So I'm passing the needle behind my working yarn into the stitch purlwise to do a slip one yarn over. Now here's where Norwegian purl comes in really handy because you don't have to move your yarn forward to do the next step which is a brioche purl. So you can see this next stitch has a little shawl over it and we're working purls because see on the back side it's in it. So we are going to put our hold our stitch here, put our yarn under our needle, insert purlwise and then complete our Norwegian purl. So now we've completed a slip one yarn over and a purl without ever having moved our yarn forward. So again, I'm going to do this again, slip one yarn over and Norwegian purl. And this goes very quickly. I'm having a little difficulty now because I'm trying to keep everything in frame, but working on my exploration station shawl and I'm sure on any other future projects that I'll be doing with brioche, um, this will go, this goes much faster. Um, so you see we're slipping our um, hills and we are purling our valleys. So we're at a hill, we're going to slip and then we're going to purl. We've made it to the last three stitches. I'm just going to slip these for the edge. And now we've completed our second pass on that row with purling the second color. Now we'll turn our work and we're going to work the wrong side, starting with color A. And remember, we're going to be purling color A because here's the right side. When it turns to the wrong side, they'll have to be worked as a purl stitch. So here's the wrong side. You can see color B is in the hills and color A is in the valleys. So we are going to be working color A first. If I can detangle myself for a moment. And I'm just going to knit these three stitches here for my edge. Just for practice. And then we're going to start. So we can see our first stitch is a hill we're going to be doing a slip one yarn over. It's a single stitch here. Slip one yarn over, and then we're going to be doing a purl. Brioche purl. So we knit together our slip one yarn over our, our stitch that's on the back plus the yarn over. So we slip, then we do a purl. We're working 
working the back. We're, we're making those stitches in the back. We're making those knit stitches in the back. And if you know basic knitting, if you're knitting on the front, on the back side is a, it, it is a purl. So here we go. Slip. Purl. Slip. Purl. Slip. Purl. I am kind of exaggerating. The motions here because I am working around the camera um, doing this in my lap I don't have to do this big sweeping motion uh, and also if I'm working with more appropriate slightly sized yarn I it, it runs like water it's it's very smooth so if you think it feels cumbersome or looks cumbersome um, it's because of the method that I'm working right now I'm working with very thick yarn and I'm also trying to work with a camera in front of my face. <laughs> so here we go. So we are going to slip the hill and we're going to purl the valley. Slip one, yarn over, and go in for a purl. Slip one, yarn over, and purl. And we're at the last three, so I am just going to slip these the edge and now we're going to slide our stitches all the way back to the beginning and work color B or color 2 and we're going to be doing some brioche knits. Okay so here we are we're back at the beginning we have our first three stitches I'm just going to slip them in my edging and then we're going to begin our brioche, brioche stitching. So you can see the first stitch we're going to work here is the one we previously did a slip one yarn over. It's in the hill and it's the knit stitch. And since we're working with color B, we're going to do brioche knitting with the color B. So we're going to brioche knit, then we're going to slip one yarn over, and then we're going to brioche knit. We're going to slip one, whoops, slip one yarn over, brioche knit slip one yarn over and we're going to continue this down to the end of the row. Okay, so we have now completed the second pass of our row. I apologize for any clanging needles, sorry. And now that is the finished second pass of the second side. So that is how you do two color brioche knitting using a Norwegian pearl and a continental knit. And it makes for a very relaxing project, especially if you're working in the round. You would always be knitting color A or purling color B or vice versa. Um, and you would just be continuing around in a spiral versus like flipping your work over again. So I hope you enjoyed that. Give it a like if you did, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.